In the brutal chaos of the Vietnam War, some soldiers became legends, but a select few inspired not just admiration, but pure bone-chilling terror. Who was the man so feared that his name sent shivers down the enemy's spine? Today we delve into the jungles of Southeast Asia to uncover the scariest man of the Vietnam War. Was he a hero pushed to the edge, or a monster born in the fires of combat? This episode is not for the faint of heart, so grab your helmet, because we're about to go behind enemy lines. In the late 1960s, deep in the Vietnam jungle, a fierce battle raged. Hostile Vietnamese troops had cornered an elite hatchet force of American MACV SOG operators and their loyal Montagnard allies. Despite being outnumbered and outflanked, the Americans refused to back down. Staff Sergeant Jerry M. Shriver, known as Mad Dog, darted from cover to cover, unleashing a barrage of fire with his unconventional arsenal of pistols, revolvers, and sawed-off shotgun. The air was thick with tension as wounded men were slowly hoisted through the dense jungle canopy to a waiting rescue chopper, each lift a race against time. The enemy advances relentlessly, but Mad Dog fights back fiercely with all his remaining ammunition. One by one, his comrades are evacuated, leaving Mad Dog to face the enemy alone. He repeatedly calls for a close air support. As the enemy fire becomes more intense, the radio offers to send fresh ground troops to assist him. Mad Dog declines the help, saying, No, no, I've got them right where I want them. Surrounded from the inside, Jerry M. Shriver was born on September 24, 1941, in Defunyak Springs, Florida. His early life remains largely mysterious, yet his destiny was clear. He would become an American hero, a decorated war veteran embodying the spirit of brotherhood forged in battle. Inspired by tales of World War II veterans fighting against the Axis of Powers, Shriver enlisted in the United States Army at a young age. He excelled as a soldier, underwent rigorous training, and earned the prestigious Green Beret as part of the Army Special Forces. During the Cold War, heightened tensions prompted the U.S. to support Vietnam after France's defeat by the Communist Viet Minh in 1954. This conflict, lasting from the late 1950s to 1975, saw the U.S. battling a determined enemy seeking to establish a communist state. Despite advanced weaponry like jets, helicopters, and missiles, the Army required special operators trained for jungle survival and unconventional warfare. Staff Sergeant Jerry M. Shriver emerged as one of these elite soldiers, eagerly embracing combat challenges in Vietnam. Arriving in Vietnam in 1966 with the U.S. 5th Special Forces, Shriver was tall, thin, and possessed a demeanor tailored for action. Medal of Honor recipient Jim Fleming described him as a quintessential warrior loner, intensely focused on his duties, constantly training to perfect his skills. Shriver's dedication to his unit was unwavering. He spent his spare moments honing his combat readiness, ensuring his men were prepared for the rigorous jungle warfare. His leadership style was tough, but aimed at forging soldiers capable of thriving under extreme conditions. Shriver, a solitary figure, often frequented the NCO club, consuming a case of beer alone while awaiting his next mission. During his initial deployment in 1966, he joined the elite and secretive MACV SOG, a task force comprising top-tier personnel from the Army, Marines, Navy, Air Force, and CIA, designed for the most challenging missions. Extending his deployments until 1969, Shriver spent over 1,000 days in Vietnam, forging strong bonds with allied Montagnard forces his battlefield prowess earned him the moniker Mad Dog, fueled by a relentless appetite for combat adrenaline. Comfortable in Vietnam jungles, he bypassed scheduled breaks to join patrols targeting North Vietnamese and Viet Cong strongholds. Even during the supposed rest and recuperation, r, &R he sought additional special operations at Plea Ring. Highly classified MACV SOG operations exposed Shriver to experiences beyond those of ordinary soldiers. Clad in distinctive tiger stripe camouflage, he wielded specialized gear like Colt Commando carbines and stealthy bows. Off-duty, he sported a distinctive blue velvet smoking jacket and derby hat. Always armed and alert to communist threats, he often carried multiple pistols and revolvers, including the M1911 and Magnum. Shriver's combat loadout was unconventional, often employing enemy AK-47s, RPKs, a sawed-off shotgun, a suppressed World War II-era M3 grease gun, or a 45 caliber M1A1 Thompson submachine gun. During debriefings, such as at MACV SOG's Command and Control North near the DMZ, he was noted for carrying multiple 38 caliber revolvers. When offered standard rifles like the CAR-15 or the M16, 
Shriver declined, preferring his varied armament. Over time, Shriver's eccentricities grew, but his steadfast commitment to missions remained resolute. In 1968, Shriver was ordered to take a mandatory rest period in the United States. During this time, he and his teammate Larry White bought a Marlin lever action rifle chambered in the powerful 444 Marlin cartridge. Shriver planned to use it not for hunting bears, but for busting bunkers and instilling fear in the enemy with its massive exit wounds. He shipped the rifle to the Mac VSOG headquarters for this purpose. As a Mac VSOG member, Shriver was a platoon sergeant in the secret hatchet force units, consisting of two to three American Mac VSOG members and 20 to 30 handpicked locals from the Montagnards or the South Vietnamese Army. These loyal fighters were trained in unconventional warfare, conducting highly classified missions deep behind enemy lines. Shriver's effectiveness earned him a $10,000 bounty on his head from Radio Hanoi. In one engagement, Shriver and his men were outnumbered, so he established radio contact for air support. When offered an exfil, Shriver famously replied, No, no, I've got them right where I want them, surrounded from the inside. Although a loner, Shriver was extremely fond of his Montagnards, independent tribe members who despised the communists and excelled in combat. His men loved him for his loyalty, as he spent most of his money on food, clothing, and supplies for them and their families. Shriver lived, ate, and slept in their barracks, forming close bonds with them. Shriver was also devoted to his large German shepherd, Klaus, whom he adopted in Taiwan. When he learned that some NCOs had force-fed Klaus beer as a cruel prank, Shriver stormed into the NCO club with his 38 revolver and threatened the men. No one dared step forward and admit responsibility. After three years of non-stop combat patrols, the harsh realities of war took a heavy toll on Mad Dog Shriver. The constant stress, danger, and loss weighed heavily on him, making him want to leave the battlefield. However, he felt a deep sense of duty and responsibility towards his fellow soldiers and their families. Despite his personal struggles and the overwhelming desire to quit, Shriver couldn't bring himself to abandon the men who depended on him. Sensing that danger was always just around the corner, Shriver pushed on, determined to protect his comrades. He understood the risks, but believed in the importance of staying with his team. His commitment and bravery kept him going, even when the odds seemed insurmountable. Shriver's persistence in the face of such adversity showed his remarkable dedication and his strong bond with his fellow soldiers. On April 24, 1969, Shriver and a Mac V SOG company prepared to raid the Quan Lao airfield in South Vietnam, near the communist headquarters. Following heavy bombardment by B-52 bombers, they geared up to eliminate the North Vietnamese garrison. With no air support due to the mission's secrecy, Shriver's platoons faced immediate challenges upon landing. Pinned down by concealed machine gun nests and surrounded by enemy forces, Shriver and his Montagnards took action to rescue their comrades. Inspiring his men, Shriver charged through the enemy fire with an Uzi SMG, leading them to the tree line. There, he rallied his troops with a smile and a nod before they advanced, neutralizing the machine gun nest with grenades. Mad Dog Shriver vanished after this engagement. Weeks later, Hanoi claimed they captured and killed him, but no evidence surfaced. Despite efforts to recover fallen soldiers, no trace of Shriver was found. At 27 years old, he was officially declared missing in action, leaving behind only a few dollars, his loyal shepherd Klaus, and his smoking jacket. Shriver received many awards and honors during his impressive military career. Some of these included a Silver Star, a Soldier's Medal of Heroism, several Bronze Stars with Valor devices, an Air Medal, a Purple Heart, and various Army commendations. These accolades highlighted his bravery, dedication, and exceptional service. Each award he received was a testament to his courage and his significant contributions in his military role. In 1974, even though his body was never found, the Secretary of the Army honored Shriver posthumously with a second Silver Star and promoted him to Master Sergeant. This posthumous recognition underscores the enduring respect and admiration for his service and sacrifice. The decision to promote him and award another Silver Star reflected the Army's acknowledgement of his bravery and the impact he had on his comrades and the mission. Share your thoughts in the comments below, and if you liked this video, Click on the next one shown on the screen. I'm sure you'll like it. Thanks for watching.